Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to the Mental Wellness Wake Up Show, a weekly podcast where growth minded, creative people come to learn best practices from both spirituality and psychology that create lasting well being. I am your host, mental wellness expert, improvised acting teacher, therapist, and coach, Dawn McMillan. Let's get to it. Okay, you beautiful person. What I want to talk about today is your thoughts, my thoughts, our thoughts, the thoughts. The title of this episode is Do Stop Believing. Why? Because 90% of our thoughts are complete trash. What? Did she just tell me my thoughts are trash? Yeah, yeah, fam, I did. So much of what passes for thinking inside of our brains is complaining about the past, worrying about the future, and resisting the present. We are comparing, we are competing, we are complaining. I don't like this. I don't want that. I can't believe that happened to me. What will happen if, oh my gosh, why is this happening? You know what should be done? Very, very little of our thought is original. Some research says that, you know, 60% of what we're thinking is pretty much the same thing we thought yesterday. And very little of it is actually helpful. Very little of it is actually helpful. The lies of depression and anxiety are many, including but not limited to. If I keep, your brain's like, if I keep reminding you of that terrible thing that happened to you, then maybe it won't happen again. That's a lie. The more you understand uh, that your uh, thoughts create your reality. Oh no, is Dawn doing that law of attraction stuff? Yes, if it works for you. No, if it doesn't. But we begin to take action in our world based on the stories that we are telling ourselves. And if the story that is running in our minds most of the time is ain't it awful or um, some form of no, I don't like, I don't want, then everything that we see in life is going to be through that lens and we're going to interpret other people's behavior through that lens and we are going to take action through that lens. Uh, Rupert Spira uses this analogy that like, let's say you're walking in a field of snow The snow is real, the snow is cold, relatively the snow is white. But if you're going through life with orange glasses on, you're gonna be looking at a whole orange world and you're gonna behave and respond to an orange world when changing your perspective might allow you to see the world as it is. So the stories that we are telling ourselves create the ways that we move through life, the way we interpret life and therefore the experiences that we have. That is why I'm saying don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything we think because most of what we think is trash. Oh, I'm so awful. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, I'm the best. Everyone should just give me what I want. It would be okay if it weren't for her. It would be okay if it weren't for him. I can't be happy until I'll be happy when, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. My whole life is ruined. We talked before about cognitive distortions and how when we look at the world through those distortions, we create suffering. If you or I really monitored our thoughts for a day, I think we would be kind of shocked, surprised, and dismayed by how many cognitive distortions we probably find. And I'm saying we, right? You may have noticed by the fact that I'm talking to you that I have not ascended into a ball of light and moved on to the next level of transcendent experience. (laughs) I'm I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. I read the news yesterday and I started down the ain't it awful trend. And then I thought, okay, first of all, me sitting here ain't it awfuling is doing literally nothing for the problems that I'm worried about. I mean, literally nothing, literally nothing. My unhappiness is making me despondent and unlikely to take actions that could be of some benefit to someone somewhere, right? Me sitting on my couch going, I can't believe it. This is awful. How could they do that? Does nothing. 
it does nothing for anyone, including me, including me. Whereas when I say, well, what's being created by some people on this planet right now really isn't serving us. What can I choose in this moment that might lead us in a better direction? Well, hey, yeah, opening up some possibilities there. Or if I'm so busy um, living in I wish or why don't they or resentment or I should have like what on earth is the point of sitting up at night saying remember that one time in third grade when I did that one thing my beloved friends your brain is feeding you trash don't believe it don't believe it your experience of life is created by the stories you tell yourself No, we're not talking about this toxic positivity that causes people to ignore the circumstances of their life that require their attention. So um, if your leg is bleeding, by all means, go to urgent care and get some medical attention. I'm not telling you to be like, everything's great, everything, everything is awesome. No, like look at the world, take off your glasses. Don't put on the rose colored glasses, but don't put on the poop colored glasses. Notice what is and put your attention on what you would like to create. Notice what is, put your attention on what you would like to create. If you would like to stop being depressed, stop complaining. Like, no, it's a chemical imbalance and I can't help it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, sure. Uh, so you have a genetic predisposition towards melancholy. All right. Does complaining make that any better for you? No. If you stop complaining and stop judging in your own mind, I can hear your objection. I didn't say anything, but if you're thinking it real hard, you are experiencing the poop colored glasses. So you're going to look at the world through your poop colored glasses and behave accordingly. If you'd like to stop being anxious, uh, look at your life. Notice you have a 100% survival rate and trust yourself to deal with what's going to happen. You don't have to like what's happening, but you can deal with it and survive it. And if you can't survive it, then you have no problems. If you do survive it, then life goes on and you'll be happy again and life will return to some sort of equilibrium. So what I'm saying is, hold on, you're being a little harsh. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know, but we've gotten to this place in our culture where, yes, we've discovered that mental health matters. We've overcorrected to coddling all of our feelings. Your feelings are created by the thoughts that you believe. You can choose to believe different thoughts extra credit if you choose to not believe much of anything and hold your opinions lightly. I believe that the sun rises in the east. Like that's scientific fact. Mm, no, sun's not doing much. The earth is rotating, right? Hold your beliefs lightly and examine them for utility. Is this belief useful? Does it serve your values? Does it make your life more peaceful, more joyful? Does it empower you and others? If so, then run with it. But if it doesn't, consider letting it go. And when your brain pops it up into your head, you don't have to hang out with it. It's kind of like um, uh, when you're driving, right? Or riding your bike or a horse or traveling at speed. Trees are going by in your peripheral vision. You can treat your thoughts like that. Oh, look, there's thought. Look, there's a tree. Look there. Oh, there it goes. And if you just allow it to be, it will keep passing. But what we do is we're, you know, riding along on our bicycle and a tree goes by and we're like, oh my God, a tree. And then we stop and we stare at it. That's what we're doing with our thoughts. Sure, they come. Your brain's just going to feed you thoughts. That's its job. The human brain evolved for your survival, not for your happiness. Its tools are not necessarily very good. But you, my beloved human, have the power to choose what you focus on. You have the power to decide whether to indulge in your thoughts. And when you use that power to tell yourself a different story about who you are and how the world is, 
and allow yourself to accept what is while focusing your attention on what will be. And you get to have a whole different experience of life. And for those of us who are interested in being of service to others, you have more energy available to yourself, to your loved ones, to the planet. So do stop believing. Do stop believing. Your opinions are just opinions. And holding them very tightly maybe shouldn't be a badge of honor. Maybe holding our beliefs loosely is a sign of emotional maturity that leaves us open to revising our opinions as we learn more, grow more, and have more information available. Yeah? Yeah? Here's why I think you matter. Because you do! You are here for a beautiful purpose. And the more you lean into your purpose, the more benefit everyone gets. So tell yourself the truth. Allow those thoughts that don't serve you to just float on by like flotsam and jetsam in a river or a tree in your peripheral vision as you're on your road trip. And remember, you are whole, perfect, and complete just the way you are right here, right now. You are worthy and deserving of so much good. So is everyone else. What? I know. All right, my beloveds, let's make a world that works for everyone. See you next time. I am so honored that you share time with me. If you've listened this far, then something here was of value to you. Would you please be a friend of the podcast and share it with at least one other person? The podcast is available on most platforms, including YouTube, and I need your help to get the word out. So please like, subscribe, and share, and a five-star review on iTunes would be chef's kiss. Thank you so much. See you next time.